Hello everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Andrea Biscarini, and I'm going to speak to you today about innovative technologies applied to strength training. Resistances used in strength training can be classified in three main categories, constant resistances, variable resistances, and adaptive resistances. Variable resistances depend on position, whereas adaptive resistances depend on the instantaneous value of the movement velocity or movement acceleration. The acceleration dependence is determined by the so-called inertial effects. To understand these effects, we will briefly examine the physics behind weightlifting. The second law of dynamics tells us that to maintain a free mass in a fixed position, like in an isometric exercise, we have to apply a vertical upward directed force equal in magnitude to the weight. If we want to lift the same mass along the vertical with constant velocity, we have to apply exactly the same force. This is because in both cases, the acceleration is zero. But now we want to lift the free mass that has an initial velocity equal to zero. In this case, we have to increase progressively the upward velocity from zero, that is to produce an upward acceleration. To do this, we have to apply a vertical upward directed force equal to the sum of the resistance and the inertial force needed to produce the acceleration. The inertial force is equal to the product of the mass and its acceleration. This is the concentric acceleration phase of the lift. In the final phase of the lift, the upward velocity should decrease to zero with a downward deceleration. To do this, we have to apply a vertical upward directed force smaller than the resistance and equal to the difference between the resistance and the inertial force needed to produce the deceleration. This is the concentric deceleration phase of the lift. To allow the mass to return back to the initial position, we have to progressively increase the downward velocity from zero. That is produce a downward acceleration. To do this, we have to apply a vertical upward directed force smaller than the resistance and equal to the difference between the resistance and the inertial force needed to produce the downward acceleration. This is the eccentric acceleration phase of the lift. In the final descending phase of the lift, the downward velocity should decrease to zero with an upward deceleration. To do this, we have to apply a vertical upward directed force greater than the resistance and equal to the sum of the resistance and the inertial force needed to produce the deceleration. This is the eccentric deceleration phase of the lift. And this is a diagram that highlights all the inertial effects. In the transition between the eccentric and the concentric phase of the lift, the applied force is higher than the resistance. In the transition between the concentric and the eccentric phase of the lift, the applied force is lower than the resistance. This is needed to produce the necessary accelerations and decelerations. Strength training machines 
that use a motor and an electronic management system can generate all the different kinds of resistance, including the inertial effects. These devices enable several advanced strength training modalities. For example, any variable resistance profile can be designed to match the human strength curves or to emphasize muscle activity in a particular portion of the range of motion or to unload specific joint structures. Hydraulic and viscose resistances are simulated by designing a resistance proportional to the magnitude of the velocity or the square of its value. Controlling velocity also enables the simulation of the isokinetic exercise modality. In this case, the resistance is instantaneously changed to be maintained equal to the variable user's force. Under this condition, the exercise velocity remains constant. It is well known that isokinetic exercises are widely used for the clinical assessment of muscle strength. Controlling velocity is also useful in rehabilitation settings. For example, a patient can intentionally decrease the exercise velocity to decrease the applied resistance in a perceived painful portion of the range of motion. With the use of robotic strength machines, one can design an eccentric resistance higher than the concentric one. Of course, the level of eccentric overload can be freely changed. Eccentric exercises have been successfully applied for the development of muscle hypertrophy in injury prevention and in rehab interventions. The resistance can also be freely increased or decreased from one repetition to the successive repetition, both in pre-planned or reactive fashion. Any kind of ramp can be designed and different ramps can be combined together. Thus, a trainer can easily program a drop set or a set with the forced repetitions. In this case, when muscle failure occurs, the machine reduces the resistance just enough to allow the completion of the repetition with a finite velocity. The techniques discussed so far can be applied to improve muscle strength, local muscle endurance, and muscle hypertrophy. However, in this Congress, the most important issue is how to use robotic machines to develop a muscle power for sports performance. The rate of force development and high velocity strength constitute the two most important neuromuscular components that contribute to the expression of explosive muscle power for sport performance. Rate of force development is the ability to develop force in a limited time frame. It is necessary to overcome the inertia of the implement or the body inertia at the beginning of explosive movements in order to produce a high level of acceleration. In fact, it is well known that the time needed to develop 
the maximum muscle force is longer than the time available to develop force in many explosive sport movements. Rate of force development and maximum force are different capacities. And these different capacities can be selectively trained with specific exercises. High velocity strength is the ability to exert force in the high velocity phase of the movement after the initial phase of acceleration. It is represented by the right side portion of the force velocity curve and is selectively trainable with low load high velocity strength training or mixed strength training. Now, consider explosive exercises with gravitational resistance. The three plots highlight the constant resistance, red line, and the time evolution of the user's force, green line, the acceleration, black line, and the velocity, blue line. At the beginning of the movement, the user's force increases impulsively from zero. As the user's force overcomes the resistance, in acceleration, the T is an increase in velocity is developed. As the velocity takes a steady value, the acceleration is zero and the user's force equals the resistance level. At the end of the lift, in the final phase of the lift, the user's force should be decreased below the level of the resistance to allow the barbell deceleration, that is a negative acceleration, and decrease of velocity to zero. Due to the inertial effects at the beginning and in the final phase of the movement, gravitational resistance is effective to maximize rate of force development and peak force. However, inertia also induces a final deceleration phase, decrease in velocity, and decrease in endpoint force, compromising the training stimulus for high velocity strength. So with explosive exercises with gravitational resistance, we have an effective stimulus for rate of force development and peak force, but we have an ineffective stimulus for high velocity strength. We would ideally avoid the inertial effects in the final phase of the lift to optimize the training stimulus for high velocity strength. This goal can be achieved executing explosive exercises with pneumatic or elastic resistances, or other resistances with negligible inertial masses. With no inertia, we ideally have no final deceleration, no decrease in velocity, and in endpoint force. This is effective for high velocity strength training. However, a resistance with a negligible inertial mass considerably limits the rate of force development and the peak force at the beginning of the movement. Now we have an effective stimulus for high velocity strength 
but an ineffective stimulus for rate of force development. With ballistic exercises with gravitational resistance, we have the benefit of the inertia at the beginning of the movement, but we also avoid the final deceleration phase because the load is released into free space at the end of the movement. This is what happens, for example, with overhead shot put throw, bench throw, and squat jump. In this case, the training stimulus is effective for both rate of force development and high velocity strength. However, these exercises are space consuming, time consuming, and may be unsafe if performed without specific equipment. With the robotic technologies, we can take the best from all different kinds of resistance and exercise modalities avoiding the relative limitations. This allows precise control in the output of both kinematic and dynamic quantities. Specifically, peak velocity and acceleration, rate of force development, peak force, mean power, and peak power. For example, the device can simulate an inertial resistance in the inertial acceleration phase of the movement. This is effective for rate of force development. However, in the final part of the movement, the resistance is changed to a non-inertial resistance to be effective for high velocity strength. This is the concept of hybrid resistance a resistance that changes its nature during the movement. The inertial and non-inertial parameters can be optimized to maximize the peak power and to obtain the peak power a specific number of milliseconds after the beginning of the movement according to specific sport demands. It is also useful to use a hybrid resistance in the eccentric phase of a repetition. For instance, at the beginning of the eccentric phase, a non-inertial resistance produces an impulsive beginning of eccentric phase, which constitutes a frequent stimulus in contact sport situations. Conversely, at the final eccentric phase, an inertial resistance to be bracket enhances muscle activation at the end of the eccentric phase for potentiation of the subsequent concentric phase. In conclusion, robotic strength machines offer new ways to optimize strength training programs. In just one machine, it is possible to not only simulate the different types of resistance, but to create hybrid resistances that change their inertial properties during the movement. Hybrid resistances can provide an effective stimulus for all neuromuscular components that contribute to the expression of explosive muscle power for sports performance. Ultimately, in addition to constant, variable, and adaptive resistance, we have now a new kind of resistance, hybrid resistance with variable inertia. This new resistance defines a new paradigm for power-oriented training, which is named variable inertia training. Here is my email addresses for any communication.
and thank you very much for your attention.